Exciting news, in October of this year, you'll have the ability to use Copilot Agents in SharePoint. This public preview will give you the ability to get hands-on and use this incredible capability to advance AI at work and help improve your Copilot experience. But what does this mean? What are the concerns that we might have with it? And how are people going to use this? Well, let's skip over all the marketing and get into the details for what this really means and what you as a leader might wanna think about right now as you prepare for another change in your AI at work landscape. Copilot agents in SharePoint allow an end user, not a developer, not an IT pro, to go and build these agents, these Copilot experiences that allow people to not look across all content, but a subset of content that they've defined. Now, this is useful for a variety of reasons. Number one, the most common pain point with Copilot today is people will do a search like prompt, they'll ask Copilot to do something for them. It'll reason over hundreds or thousands of documents, and then it returns a small subset of those documents and gives the person the response back. The thing is, is if it chose the wrong documents, not the documents you wanted it to look at, but other documents, then often you're gonna be very dissatisfied with the result. And as you probably have seen yourself, when you do that same prompt with Copilot, even with a bunch of context, it's going to give you different results each time. Now, the good news is, Copilot agents in SharePoint allows end users or power users to create these agent experiences that allow you then to filter and select a small subset, one, two, three, four, you select the files or the folders that you want it to look at. It looks at only that content and then reasons over it and still provides the results that we want. Now this is exciting because what it means is for many organizations that struggle with domain expertise or they struggle with the fact that these generalized agents aren't necessarily helping them in these broad-based ways, this allows them to provide a much more effective way of giving them the answers that they're looking for. And this makes sense in a few ways. Number one, it's exciting because for many end users, this gives them a way in which they can calibrate and tune their Copilot experience. They can put starter prompts in, they can do all sorts of things that are very accessible and don't require a developer. Number two, once they've crafted these things, if people start to use them more, they can start to enhance them. If people are creating a, a co-pilot for a recent launch of a product we just made in a product site, right, with marketing material and all that stuff, and we create one for it, and we start to see people are using it instead of bothering you or me or whoever is supporting the product launch, now what we can do is we can enhance that co-pilot experience. We can add new capabilities, even agent-like capabilities where it's actually doing things on our behalf using Copilot Studio or support from IT or external support from a services vendor like Tutelead. And in that model, what we're able to do is solve our needs around AI, make the experience better, but we're able to do it from a starting point of being able to just calibrate and tune an approved Copilot experience. Number three, this is exciting because it means for many organizations, it allows us to create and then share these Copilots very easily. You see, out of the box, when we can use these copilots and craft them to say, look at this content, we can also then take that .copilot file that's created from it and share it. We can make that available in a Teams message, so you can at mention it, and it can just kind of be like an active part of that team and that team chat. Or you can take that uh, scenario and you can expose it inside of that SharePoint site. So when people go to the SharePoint site, it's like, oh, here's the Copilot experience, and I'm gonna ask these questions about the content that's reasoned over in the SharePoint site, a subset of it based on that demand. And there's other reasons that this is very helpful because it's a .copilot file, all of the IT and compliance and business consideration on the security side is a lot easier because it's a new file type in SharePoint, sure, but it's one that still ad adheres to all the other rules. So we can do things like recycle and restore. We can change the permissions, not on necessarily all of the individual content that it's pulling from, which is of course that still works the same way, but even on the co copilot itself, making it so that some are visible to some people or piloted to some people or previewed to some people and not available to others. Now, there's even more reasons to be excited about this. One of the other big things that this changes is for many organizations, it allows more people to be participants, active participants in this AI journey, crafting and improving the experience for those that they work with, within their department, within their teams, or within entire divisions. Now, it does come with some risks and challenges though. What are some of those risks and challenges? Well, number one, it's a new file type. 
So we need to figure out what are we gonna do with these .copilot files? What are our organizational properties? Yes, of course, compliance and other things are still supported in the out of the box way because it's a SharePoint file, but are we gonna look at these files? Are we gonna look for where they're being created the most? Who's creating them? Potentially proactively reach out to people that are creating a lot of .copilots and maybe encourage them to join communities or proactively support them from an IT uh, digital excellence perspective. Maybe those are great opportunities for you to start thinking about in your own organization. Because again, the opportunity is many of these, as they start to get adopted, can become great springboards to create more complex agent experiences that IT or an external party can support you building. Now, there's another consideration too, which is, well, if everyone can create Copilot agents in SharePoint, well, what does that mean for our organization? So again, these agents that people are creating still follow the same rules of Copilot. So if you have access to the data they're pulling from, of course you'll have the same experience within these Copilot agents. But it's also worth understanding that many organizations are struggling with this transition from security through obscurity to a more traditionally and effective model of security. And so the essential way to describe this is before they rolled out Copilot, people didn't really search. And so people didn't find that they had access to things they probably shouldn't have had access to. And now once we've rolled out Copilot, that comes up a lot more. And so organizations are scrambling or working hard to remediate you know, those security through obscurity risks. But here's the thing, as people create Copilot um, agent experiences in SharePoint, what they're essentially doing is every time a user goes and uses this Copilot agent in SharePoint, instead of the broad-based biz chat experience, what they're doing is they're grounding, they're picking a filtered subset of content to look at. And that, Every one of those retrievals, every one of those requests, every one of those prompt engagements, it means there's one less risk exposure for the security through obscurity risks that Copilot might find something else. Because what it does is it only looks at the files that have been calibrated or tuned over here. In this way, for many organizations on the IT side, this should be a big boon. In fact, it should be something you encourage fast and rapid rollout and adoption of because it will reduce some of those very real risks that exist today and it improves the experience and satisfaction because many people are again very satisfied with how it works with like outlook and inside of apps but might struggle with how it works when you use these broad-based queries again if i'm in a meeting it has the meeting context if i'm in an email it has the email context so it tends to do really well when i'm just asking for it often i might struggle whereas again if i tell which copilot to use or i go and use one of these copilots then often it'll give me the results that i'm looking for with a much higher level of accuracy now there's a lot more to think about here, uh, but I wanna keep this video short. So I'll just end with, you know, if you're a internet owner, you own sites, this is something you need to consider because what are you gonna do once you have a bunch of .copilot files in your site and they're exposed, you know, through your desi design decisions inside of your SharePoint intranet or your SharePoint site, which ones do you surface, you know, over others? In some organizations where they haven't flattened and they've got like huge numbers of users actively working in one site and all the content is in less sites, not more, then it's gonna be harder to create these calibrated co-pilots. And there's other considerations too. If you're on IT, you know, how, what are the limitations? How many files through the experience limitations or literally through how co-pilot agents work can be used and consumed into that co-pilot agent? Is there a limit? Can it work across sites? Can it do all these other things? These are all considerations and yes, there's answers, by the way, to all these questions, but these are things to understand so that you can prepare both your um, educational support, because this is going to be something you need to lead with and not react to once it's live. And it's also something that's important for you to understand so that you understand when IT should get involved to up level, when IT should get involved, when there's a need that doesn't quite fit the constraints of this business user or super user led experience of co-pilot agents in SharePoint. So thanks so much for your time and attention. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have more questions about AI at work or about Copilot, I really encourage you to take a look at other things like our recent videos. We've done a lot of sessions lately, multiple webinars on agents and these uh, plugins and extending Copilot scenarios, especially ones that are focused on the business discussion, like the value and the cost modeling. I really would encourage you to take a look at those things. And thanks again for your time and attention. I hope this takes this marketing announcement and makes this part of it Copilot agents in SharePoint, just a little bit more clear to understand and also gets you thinking about some of those considerations. Thanks so much for your time.